In the arena menu, if you scroll to the side, you'll notice the challenges section. Initially, you'll only have the survivor and monk challenges unlocked. By beating the game as each character, you'll also unlock their respective challenges here. Except as Hunter, we'll need to beat the game as survivor or monk to unlock them. The last row of challenges are unlocked by beating other challenges, with challenge 70 requiring beating every other challenge, which also means you'll need to beat most of the Slugcat campaigns. Beating challenge 70 is how you earn the champion achievement, which is currently one of the rarest achievements in the game on Steam. The challenges are a great way to practice certain mechanics, such as fighting lizards or some of the character specific abilities. All challenges will have a specific objective that you need to complete, after which you have to return to a shelter alive to win. Some challenges involve killing enemies, eating food, or some very specific things like stealing a pearl from a scavenger, knocking the shells off of a red centipede, or keeping slug pups alive. Many challenges will have a time limit, and after reaching it, rain will start to fall and very quickly kill you. A lot of challenges also refer to points, which you earn by either eating food or killing creatures. When you need to earn a certain number of points, you can hold the final pieces of food in your hands and return to the shelter to eat them. The game considers that you'll eat the food in your hands in the shelter if it brings you up to enough points, just like the base game. Check the description for the timestamps of each challenge if you're stuck on a certain one. Going one by one, let's start with the survival challenges. This is one of the most straightforward challenges and it's a great way to practice lizard fighting. You spawn a survivor and you have to kill a green and a pink lizard. You've got spears here and here. Remember that lizards are immune to damage on their heads and that hitting a lizard with a spear will briefly stun it and you can get behind them and repeatedly pick up and throw the spear to kill them. You can also use rocks and knock them over to expose their bellies. It'll take about two to three spears for the pink lizard and about five to six for the green. You can also do slide throws to shove a spear into their mouth for bonus damage by throwing the spear while you slide. You won't have access to spears in Challenge 2, and you'll need to dodge and sneak around several blue lizards and a white lizard while collecting fruit. The key here is to use the tunnels and debris to deter the lizards. Blue and white lizards are not very determined and will give up rather quickly after losing sight of you. I recommend collecting the fruit one at a time and keeping debris in one hand to stun and knock away the lizards that are chasing you. If you fill up both your hands with fruit, you won't be able to easily escape a grab. You'll need to collect 10 of the 12 fruit in the map, and you can enter the shelter after eating 8 if you keep a fruit in both hands. Appropriately named Theft, in this challenge there are no items whatsoever to pick up on the ground. You'll need to steal weapons from scavengers and use those to kill them. Just press pick up when you're next to a scavenger and you'll steal whatever they're carrying. You need to kill three enemies here to win and there are three scavengers and a pink lizard. Remember that scavengers will not typically die in a single spear throw as survivor unless you hit them in the head, so always be ready to pick up a second spear and throw it at them again. I recommend using vertical terrain to your advantage and falling on the scavengers to ambush them or climbing up from below. Don't stay horizontal to them with an open line of sight since they can only throw spears sideways like you. This maze can be quite confusing, so this is a visual representation of where all the paths lead. You'll need to pick up every single lasagna. Fall down this hole and pick up this lasagna, then go through the tunnel and pick up this one. Eat both of them, go up this tunnel, and then into the one to the left of it. Pick up the lasagna in here, eat it, and the one on the top right tunnel. Then, depending on where the centipedes are, either head straight right and pick up both lasagnas, or go down and then down again. Once you've gotten all the lasagnas, just head back to the shelter. This is the first of the time-limited challenges, giving you two minutes to knock every squid cater off to their death. All you have to do is hit them with a piece of debris to stun them, and either let them fall, or pick them up and throw them off into the kill box before they recover. You can catch bat flies and eat them, but that's more work than just killing the squid caters. In challenge 6, you're put up against a bunch of leeches in a pool of water and need to keep jumping in to gather bubble fruit. There are tunnels leading up to a pole with snails which you can throw into the water to stun the leeches and give yourself a moment to swim safely. Make sure to utilize the snails and swim quickly. If you have a couple leeches on you, you can go into the tunnels to get out of the water and have them fall off. This is the last of Survivor's normal challenges, and you won't have access to anything to pick up besides batflies. You'll need to catch seven of them while avoiding three blue lizards and a white lizard while on a time limit and platforming above a pit. The tunnel connections lead here, and the path I like to take is immediately going up here and pouncing to this group of batflies to catch two of them. Then go up here, catch some more, and keep dancing around with the tunnels to dodge the lizard while catching the batflies. Remember, you only need to eat five of them, and you can go into the shelter with the rest of them in your hands. Look for opportunities where lizards won't be able to see you using the narrow holes and tunnels to your advantage, then get back to the shelter. On to the monk challenges, and the first one is to tame a lizard. It's pretty simple, hunt some squid caters, pick them up, and throw them on the ground. You'll hear a noise and see the shelter symbol pop up once you've done it. You are playing as monk though, so it will take two spears to kill a squid cater before you can feed it to a lizard. You're up against two monster kelp, and you need to get five food out of ten bubble fruit. Monster kelp can be fed with a bubble fruit to temporarily distract them and get them to retreat, which is the crux of this challenge. The most consistent way to do this, in my experience, is to pick up the two bubble fruit on the bottom, grab onto the pipe directly above the kelp, drop both of them, then quickly pick up the third one here and drop that one as well. As soon as the kelp goes to eat one, pick up the two in the water, jump onto land, and eat them. Then drop the remaining two into the water, wait for the kelp to eat one, and grab the other. Climb the pipe above to the right side, and instead of dropping them in the water here, throw them over to the left side until there are three on the land over there. 
Climb back up and drop them into the water with the pipe above the kelp, let it grab a snack, pick up the last two, and head to the shelter. The right side layout makes it a little harder to drop things in the water over there safely, which is why I find this way more consistent. The next one is called Airstrike, and you've got a bunch of spears and a vulture grub at your disposal. All scavengers must die, at your hands or the vultures. Head up to the top right of the map immediately, pick up the grub and the spear, then head into this hole and throw it. Wait for an opportunity, as the vulture will start fighting the scavengers and pick them off. Let them get isolated and fight them one at a time while the rest are distracted. Monk has low spear damage, but a headshot will still insta-kill a scavenger. You'll need to engineer a situation where a vulture attacks a blue lizard and you save the lizard to win this challenge. The blue lizard will not attack you, so don't worry about getting too close. All you have to do is wait for it to bite the lizard and then spear it, and you'll befriend the lizard. You can use the beehive in the middle of the map to immobilize the lizard to line up where the vulture will grab it from. The lizard doesn't need to survive after you rescue it once, either you can just spear the vulture and let it re-grab the lizard while you book it to the shelter. Much like the previous challenges, you just need to feed and tame some lizards here. It's dark, but hunt some lantern mice and throw them to the lizards. I find jumping down here to pick up a spear to work very well, and then climb straight up on the pole to the left of this tunnel and jump up. The room is laid out like this, although it's dark and the items and spawns are different. You'll need to pop and eat the popcorn plant in the center of this room 25 times to win this challenge while also avoiding two vultures. Aside from the occasional situations where one vulture can clip out of bounds, you'll need to dance around them repeatedly. Let them get distracted by the jetfish down below and take things slowly, you don't have a time limit here. Don't be afraid to run off to the side and hide. Use the terrain to your advantage and go through the middle hole taking one bite at a time and then run. The spears are off to the left, but don't bother with trying to fight the vultures or knock off their masks. Monk cannot deal enough damage to knock a mask off a vulture, and there isn't a good area to stunlock them with spears. You can keep a spear to get out of a grab, though, if one happens to hit you. False Stomach is the last and most difficult of Monk's normal challenges. In three minutes, you have to eat three fruit, five bubble fruit, two lasagna, two noodle flies, a hazer, all of an egg bug's eggs, a vulture grub, and two jellyfish. Here is how you do that. Immediately pick up this fruit above where you spawn and eat it. Then climb to the right and pick up the bubble fruit and the hazer. Throw the hazer so you can eat it later, pick up the bubble fruit here and drop both of them into the water. Go back and pick up the vulture grub and another bubble fruit and again drop them into the water. Do not throw the vulture grub. Dropping it into the water will drown it while throwing it will attract a vulture. Pick up both jellyfish and throw both of them at the egg bug to kill it. And now, go ahead and snack on the food and be sure to pick up the last two bubble fruit and drop them in the water. And don't forget about the hazer, it can blend into the grass here. The timing might be cut a little close, especially if you forget about the hazer and have to look for what you miss, but that'll get you to exactly 24 points. On to the hunter challenges, and now things get a little tricky. Notice how this challenge has a question mark for creatures? That means spawns are random. You'll need to get a total of 30 points, and you won't know what you're up against ahead of time. As hunter, you can eat your kills for additional points, so keep that in mind. You'll be facing different varieties of lizards, mostly green and pink, but occasionally white, and sometimes scavengers and squid caters can pop up. There's an explosive spear up at the top right you can use to insta-kill a lizard, and the rest of the spears are scattered on the blocks in the middle. Use the same tactics as survivor. Spear bellies, use rocks to flip over lizards, slide throws, and stuff like that. Much like the last challenge, you'll need to get a bunch of points with random spawns in this map. You'll mostly be facing caramel lizards, cyan lizards, scavengers, and vultures. You need 30 points, and I recommend focusing heavily on scavengers. They're going to give you explosive weaponry to kill the other threats, and each scavenger is worth 10 points if you eat their corpse. Hunter deals enough damage to one-shot them as well. A cyan lizard is worth 15 points if you eat it after being killed, and they're pretty weak, so they're a good second option. Given the tankiness of caramel lizards and vultures, I would avoid them when possible unless you snagged an explosive spear. There are pacified beehives available for pickup as well, and you can crawl through this bottom area under the dilapidated train car. You'll have very minimal tools available in this challenge. With two spears, you'll need to kill a vulture. Go immediately right and up this tunnel to pick up both spears, then leave the vulture down here. By using two spears, you can keep the vulture stunlocked and keep spearing it. The way it works is that each spear cannot be picked up for a brief period after throwing it, but by alternating between two spears, you can throw them much faster and keep it stunlocked. Just spam pick up and throw once both spears are in, and you'll kill it. Much like the previous few challenges, you've got random spawns and just need to kill things. Squid caters, white and blue lizards, king vultures, center wings, noodle flies, you're going to be up against a lot here. You can use debris to knock lizards to their death for some quick points if they're positioned above a ledge. There's also an explosive spear at the top right of the map, but it's a little tricky to get up there. And finally, we get to a challenge that is not just killing random spawns, although it kind of sucks. There are five drop rigs crammed into a small, compact area, and you need to catch 12 bat flies while avoiding them. These are my tips. Firstly, drop rigs will generally ignore you while moving around trying to set up their trap. Secondly, you can use debris to stun the drop rigs for a decent period of time, although they may be aggressive for a moment after they recover. Thirdly, you can hide in the tunnels or run past the Myros birds up above to get around the drop rigs. And fourthly, you can drop straight down a tunnel that a drop rig is next to you without it attacking you. Use all of these tactics to get the bat flies that you need. 
And now we're back to random spawns and killing things for points. There was an electric spear at the top center of the map, which you can get through these tunnels, and you'll be up against centipedes, mole lizards, various spiders, and myrose birds. Remember that flashbangs will instantly kill spider type enemies and make myrose birds completely unable to detect you for a period of time since they rely on sight. If you feel bold, you can use the lightning spear to stun lock and kill a myrose bird, which will get you a very large number of points. And the last of Hunter's challenges is, you guessed it, killing random spawns for points. You're in the dark against various spiders, centipedes, mole lizards, and lantern mice. If you head out to the right and up the first pipe, then go left, there are spears to pick up. There are also spears over here and over here. Take things one at a time and be sure to eat the meals that you kill, and then make your way back to the shelter after you get enough points. On to Gourmand, who at least has more unique challenges. The first one is to sit on a bunch of caramel lizards. You have no weapons and no items and no time limit. It's just you and a bunch of lizards to sit on. Climb up high and use the tunnels to get back after you jump off. The caramels will spit at you and make it a little tricky, but once you reduce the numbers down to 1 or 2, it'll be much easier. Sometimes the caramels can also launch themselves off a ledge and die. You'll know you killed a lizard when it makes this sound, instead of this sound. To do this challenge, you'll want to utilize Gourmand's meal mechanic for extra food. You only have 90 seconds. I recommend jumping up to get this gooey duck and grabbing this big lasagna, eating them as a meal, then grabbing this gooey duck and pouncing to these lasagnas and eating a meal. Pick up the remaining two lasagnas and eat one of them. Eat the second one as a meal with this gooey duck, then pick up the last lasagna and gooey duck and eat them as a meal. That is the consistent strategy that doesn't rely on batflies or killing creatures. You could kill squid caters or yeeks by sitting on them as well, and potentially catch some batflies to use as extra food or meals. This next one is called Infinite Utility, and as you might guess, you need to pop a popcorn plant and continuously use it to get items to kill a red centipede with. Hold pick up with nothing in your hands and stomach, and you'll cough up an item as long as you have food to spare. The easiest method is to look out for spore puffs or mushrooms. A mushroom and a rock crafted together will create a spore puff, and spore puffs will very easily kill red centipedes. You can lose the red centipede by abusing pipes, remaining out of sight, and moving slowly to avoid letting it heal you. One well-placed spore puff, or a couple poorly placed ones, is enough. Alternatively, sometimes the centipede will get stuck, in which case you can just spear it to death. And now it's babysitting time. You have a bunch of slug pups with alternating gravity, and you have to keep all of them alive. The best way to do this is to pick them up and throw them all into one corner, then keep throwing them in it whenever they try to leave. There is a fair bit of RNG with how they behave, but try to keep shoving them into the corner. If any of them get out, try to track them down as soon as gravity goes back to normal. You need to last for two minutes and then get into the shelter. You've just gotta kill a bunch of noodle flies between three different screens here. I recommend going down to the left first and killing this egg bug, then spearing noodle flies for the rest of the food. Note that it will take multiple spears to kill an adult noodle fly if you're exhausted, but it's easy to line up a throw in the narrow passageways. This is a crafting challenge, and what you're gonna wanna do is go up to the very top and grab the lantern, and then combine that with a noodle fly egg to make a vulture grub. Then, summon and kill a vulture. Depending on how things work out, you could stun it with an explosive made by combining a cherry bomb and debris and then spear it to death or sit on its face and knock it down into the acid, or some combination of the two. If you can't eat the vulture after it dies, combine the noodle fly eggs with mushrooms to make centipedes to eat for the rest of the points. Gourmand's last challenge is to kill a few things with random spawns in this map. The trick is that it's laid out to allow you to fall downward and face sit things to death. You could kill mole lizards and spitter spiders, grab the spear down here and slowly make your way to 30 points, or you could do the pro game of play and fall down on a Myros bird to insta-kill it and then eat it for 22 of your points. You basically just want to sit here and wait for things to fall on an ambush. Artificer's challenges introduced us to the rifle, and we're going to be using it a bit from here on out. It's a gun that you pick up and hold similarly to a grappling worm. Pressing throw will use it rather than throw it, and you hold pick up with ammunition in your other hand to load it. Here, you'll be loading it with flashbangs, which shoot glowing bullets that light up the map, until eventually they explode like a flashbang. You'll need to navigate around this map and pick up seven of the Skyflower food things while avoiding a vulture, using the gun to light the path. Don't bother with trying to kill the vulture, the food and map layout is all right here. It's one MILF Slugcat versus five Scavengers. You start with an exploding spear and need to get the rest of the weapons from the Scavengers dead or alive. Start by getting a free kill with the spear, then start leading them into tunnels and ambushing them with vertical movement. Remember, you're immune to dying from explosions, so you can pick up grenades and throw them point blank for kills. This is a swimming challenge, and since Artificer will blow up underwater very quickly, your time is quite limited. Start by going down this tunnel and picking up the glowy egg fruit, then swimming back and eating it. Go to the middle and wait for the water level to go down, then pick up the middle and left fruit. Eat them, then once the water level goes down, swim in for the third. Make your way up top and go down the right tunnel, pick up the fruit, and you've won. You don't have much time though, so be careful and get things done quickly. This time, we're loading up the rifle with noodle flies. Don't bother with trying to kill the mama noodle fly because she seems to have infinite HP or regenerates. Either way, she can't be killed. Pick up the gun and load it with three noodle fly eggs. The mother noodle fly will be hostile while you hold the egg, but if you load it with a gun, she'll consider you to have dropped it and she'll stop attacking you. 
Once you shoot though, it'll fire and kill a baby and she will turn aggressive permanently. Shoot all six and use this pipe here and dodge the mother going back to pick up more babies to eat. Remember, you can pick up the last two and run into the shelter without eating them. Perfect parries. This challenge is very, very difficult if you haven't practiced parrying. I sure didn't. I didn't even know how to before this challenge. As Artificer, crouch and press jump and pick up at the same time as if you were double jumping but on the ground. This will do an AOE explosion that stuns creatures and deflects projectiles. To do this challenge, you need to pull off parrying four times in a row against these scavengers. You can do this with mushrooms, very good timing and some luck, but I have a better strategy. These scavengers are immortal, but they don't have unlimited spears. Hunt them down and take all of their spears, throwing the exploding ones to destroy them and embedding the regular ones into walls. Then they will be completely unable to kill you, but will still throw debris at you. Parrying debris counts towards the challenge. Simply parry the debris with your unlimited time and make your way to the shelter. You're up against three elite scavengers. Start by grabbing this electric spear and throwing it right. If you're lucky, it'll headshot and insta-kill one of them. I recommend using this corner and waiting for the elite scavs to come up, then jumping and spearing them. It'll be some tricky combat, but remember to keep moving vertically with jumps if they're horizontal to you and take cover whenever possible. Wait for an ambush and pick them off one at a time. This next challenge wants you to keep this lantern mouse alive for two minutes. It gives you a gun that you can load with cherry bombs to get explosive ammo that scares away lizards, but honestly, I found just picking up the mouse and running around with it to be a better way to do this challenge. Hide with the mouse until the lizards start to see you, then haul ass to get them to lose aggro. Stay calm and out of line of sight, then stop moving so they can't detect you. It's a stealth game, be sneaky, keep the lantern mouse alive in your hands, and make your way to the shelter. And we're on to Rivulet. Here, you'll need to get a bunch of points in a periodically flooding room faced with eel lizards, jetfish, squid caters, and scavengers. There are lily pucks that you can eat, but not many of them. Focus killing scavengers since they're worth a lot of points and often have explosive spears to steal that you can use for other kills. In this challenge, you'll need to steal jellyfish from down here and use them to kill at least three egg bugs while also avoiding salamanders. Each egg bug will drop six eggs and you need to eat 20 food total. Don't let the salamanders kill them because the egg bugs won't always pop. You can also eat the jellyfish for a little extra food. Three egg bugs is 18, plus the two jellyfish you pick up is 20 food. You've got two aquapedes in a room with changing water level. Let the aquapedes see you, and then lead them through this tunnel one at a time to the room with several spears. Use the re-spearing tactic of spamming pick up and throw to kill it, then pick the spears up, leave them on the ground again, pick up the body, throw it out of the tunnel, and lead the second one in. Rinse and repeat, then get out. If you don't have enough spears, you can pick up more here and here to bring to that chamber in the middle. You've got to dodge and swim around three jellyfish while picking up glowy egg fruit here. Use the fact that the top of the middle jellyfish has collision that isn't dangerous to jump out of the water between dives and catch two at a time jumping to the surface to eat them. Try to spend as little time in the water as you can and don't be afraid to use swim boosts. Finally out of the water, this challenge relies on rivulet speed. You need to catch three bat flies while being pursued by spiders. You have mushrooms and I recommend eating one to catch the first bat fly. Eat one, then catch the next two and hold them in your hand to bring them to the shelter so you don't have to sit still. Keep moving, eat more mushrooms if you can, and catch those bat flies. You've got to kill four Myros vultures here in a very specific way. All you have access to are grenades, and you need to stun them over a cliff so they fall to their death. You need to land body shots. A wing hit won't stun them for long enough. You have six grenades, so you can afford to mess up a few times. Wait at the bottom half near the tunnel so you have an escape route if necessary and look for opportunities, times when the Myros Vulture puts its wings behind it and shoves its body forward. Sometimes you can get two for one kills when they clump up like this. It's you, three lasagnas, a gravity ball, and a world infested with daddy long legs. Start by going down here and slide out of this tunnel to the safe spot down here. Make your way up, grab and activate the gravity ball, and either throw it so it bounces down here, or drop it and pick it back up while you get the lasagna. Climb back up, reactivate gravity, fall off, eat the lasagna, then jump over the daddy long legs, go up the tunnel, eat the last lasagna, and make your way to the exit. On to Spearmaster now. You've got to kill three white lizards with very limited space, using only the spears that you can produce yourself. Those lizards are here, here, and here. Two spears will kill a lizard, but you have a time limit so you can't afford to sit around waiting. Produce two spears immediately and try to double spear one of these two lizards if their body is exposed to you. Pick the spears back up and use them on a second lizard or produce more. It's close quarters, but you just need to spear lizards twice and make it to shelter. Also, remember, one spear will let you cripple lizards and make it easier to deal with the other ones even if it doesn't kill them outright. It's a room that periodically floods with acid filled with mother spiders, eel lizards, center wings, and squid caters. 
Stay at your spawn location and keep producing more spears and throw them at things as they arrive. Center wings are a great choice to aim for due to their size, and approaching lizards can be knocked down if they're coming to threaten you. Be wary of hunting down mother spiders since coalesce speeds can be tough to deal with and they won't get killed by acid. You'll need to hit 5 popcorn plants on the far side of this gap while being pestered by squid caters without killing any of the squid caters. Produce spears in this nook here at first and line yourself up like this for each spear throw. The first one, second, third, fourth, and fifth. Bide your time to find an opening and be careful about pressing pickup when near a squid cater because if you pick up the squid cater you'll drop the spears and if you drop the spears they won't be able to pierce the popcorn plants because they'll lose their white sucky ability. Much like before, you just gotta produce spears and throw them at stuff from a distance to kill them. There's not a whole lot going on here. You got squid caters, scavengers, centipedes, vultures, and cyan lizards. Stick to your area for the most part and line up spear throws. Hitting an enemy that then falls and dies in acid will count as a kill for you, so you can try to line those up. Crouching here will hit that little perch over there as well, which scavengers like to stay on. You do need 50 points, so this will not be a short challenge. Stay where you are and pick off things as they show up. Here, you'll have to kill three eels in the extremely thick mud liquid. Just produce two spears and jump directly in the water at them, throwing both of them at their body. Two spears is enough to kill the lizard, and they won't be able to maneuver in there to dodge. You'll have to kill an inspector in this challenge, and once you anger it, it's going to start throwing spears at you, including the ones that you throw at it. I find the best way to kill it is to hide in this tunnel here, throwing spears at it, since it'll be very unlikely to throw a spear in that hole to hit you because its aim isn't that good. It can rarely hit you, but for the most part, if you keep producing spears and wait for opportunities to throw them, you'll be fine by sitting in this hole. There are two Myros Vultures to kill, but unlike Rivulet, you don't get convenient terrain to insta-kill them on. You're fighting them outright with your own spears. There are two Exploding Spears up here that you can get to quicken the fight, but I wouldn't rely on them too heavily since they can be tricky to grab sometimes and aren't always easy to line up. If you want them, be sure to use these tunnels down here to grab them. Produce spears, find your openings, and throw them. Sometimes the Myros Vultures will get stuck, which simplifies the fight significantly. Also, fun fact, I learned that the Myros Vulture explosion is actually a laser that shoots where it's pointing and not an explosion around where it gets stunned, it just happens to usually be pointing its head at the ground when it gets hit. Saint's first challenge requires you to dodge and survive in a room with a red lizard for 2 minutes while also gathering 5 glowy egg fruits. Pay attention to the time limit here. Notice that the limit is 118 seconds, but you need to survive for 120. That means rain will start before the shelter is available, and you need to be ready to enter the shelter when time runs out. I recommend grabbing them in this order, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then staying in this hole until time almost runs out since the lizard can't reach you. At about 12 seconds remaining, rain is going to start falling and pushing you down, so I would leave it about 25 or 30 seconds left to make sure you can get it. Then either jump up here or go to the left and through this tunnel to make it to the shelter. You need to bait these two monster kelp into killing these four blue lizards. The key thing to remember here is that monster kelp sight is movement based. The first two lizards will be eaten easily. If you quickly jump to the left side and they follow you, then you need to wait until the kelp finishes eating to attract the attention of the other two. Use these tunnels and small, slow movements to get their attention. You can stand directly in front of the kelp, and as long as you aren't moving much, they won't see you. The lizards will, and that's a good way to attract them. This challenge is quite tricky because it's got a strict time limit and you can't afford to mess up. Snails will stun Saint for 8 seconds, and this room is filled with them. You need to make your way around, dodging them and centipedes and picking up lasagnas. There are 4 lasagnas on every floor except the one you spawn on. I recommend going right, picking up these 2 lasagnas here, then getting the rest of them on that floor, going through the tunnel to the top, eating those lasagnas, and then going to the right tunnel to reach the last level and eating those lasagnas. The timing will be tight and snails might knock around the lasagnas, but you can make it just in time. This is essentially a revamp of the survivor challenge, except now you're saint. Hit the squid caters with debris and throw them off the ledge. They won't stay stunned for long, so timing is a little tight. You can find the debris in these spots here. You've got to kill four spicy egg bugs here, which is not an easy task. The way these work is that the bugs are passive, but most things, such as a piece of debris, an explosion, a spear, even grappling it with the tongue will pop them, and cause them to release their eggs, which are essentially sticky bombs. However, this does not kill them. They will then become aggressive, climbing any surfaces at a fast speed to hunt you down and insta-kill you. They immediately stun you upon touching you and do a drawn-out kill animation. You start with two spicy eggs here and here, and the trick is to throw both of them at the same egg bug so they explode in rapid succession. The first one pops the bug, and the second one kills it, and it drops more eggs for you to use on the other egg bugs. Spicy eggs fall off when things go through tunnels, so be wary of that. Alternatively, you can pick up the spicy egg bug and drag them down to the nacho cheese down at the bottom. They can't swim very well, they'll just float and be unable to move, even after popping. If you bring them down here, you can throw the spicy eggs at them until they die.
This challenge is quite difficult, and I don't have great advice for it. You need to survive for 60 seconds against two king vultures and collect two fruit while avoiding the proto long legs and worm grass on the ground. Now, to dodge, you basically just need to keep moving, grappling from side to side, and try to keep barriers between you and the vultures so they can't shoot you. However, there is an alternative solution that's tricky to execute but works very well if you do. And that is that the king vultures can knock each other's masks off with their spears, and unmasked vultures will fight masked vultures. So, if you can manage to get one to shoot a spear and knock off the other's mask, they'll be distracted fighting each other, and they can even be caught by the worm grass and proto long legs. Best case scenario, they'll fight indefinitely and leave you alone. Worst case scenario, the unmasked one will eventually unmask the other one, and you'll just have gotten a lot of free time from it. And finally, you get to have Ascended Form Saint. You need to earn 100 points during this challenge, which is easiest done by killing 4 red creatures or Myros Vultures, each of which give you 25 points. However, and this is extremely important, Ascending Creatures does not give you kill points. You have to ascend spicy egg bugs and pick up those spicy eggs and use those to kill creatures. One Sticky Bomb is enough to kill a Myros Vulture or a Red Lizard, but not Red Centipedes, which take at least three in my experience. Because of that, I recommend hunting Myros Vultures and Red Lizards and ignoring or just ascending Red Centipedes. White and Cyan Lizards are worth killing if you can do it easily, but I wouldn't focus on them. Do not try to kill spicy egg bugs unless you ascend them, because angry spicy egg bugs are a serious threat. Using the tunnels up top, you can line up throws on Myros Vultures pretty easily. You can also ascend and cancel ascension mid-flight, then throw a sticky bomb and reascend to line up shots on red lizards in tricky to reach areas. You do have a time limit, but it's very generous. Just get to hunting those red lizards and Myros Vultures. And now we're onto the final row of challenges, the difficult ones that are unlocked by completing other challenges with varying slug cats. This one is Hunter, requires you to take this pearl from this scavenger and make it back to the shelter up top. Realistically, this means you're gonna have to kill most of these scavengers. There are plenty of exploding spears and weapons, and you can use this tunnel here to sneak up on the scavengers and get away from them. One scavenger spawns up top and often has a grenade. If you can steal this grenade, you can throw it and kill most, if not all, of the other scavengers easily. This is a maze filled with mole lizards and orange lizards, and you need to collect glowy egg fruits everywhere as survivor. However, you need to move fast as soon as you spawn in because there is a mole lizard immediately inbound to your location. I recommend this path. Feel free to take your time and wait in these nooks until an opportunity arises, there's no time pressure at all. Keep an eye out for situations where they're distracted for opportunities to sneak by. This is a challenge with Monk, requiring you to quickly swing with grappling worms across the map as rain is fast approaching. You have very little time, so pick up the grappling worm immediately and start swinging. There will be orange lizards at the end, but in my experience they can be ignored because they're going to panic as soon as rain starts, and by the time you get there, the rain is going to be starting. Make sure to pick up a fruit before going in the shelter, since you need to collect at least one point. This is a tricky platforming section that requires you to utilize boost jumps and optimal spear throws into walls to get each fruit. Start by taking a spear and then jumping down here and throwing it into the wall. Collect this fruit and climb up the spear, then pick up a piece of debris. Head to the right and jump on this pole, collect the fruit, and then use the debris to boost jump to the next pole. What that means is you throw the debris in mid-air to give yourself extra distance and speed. Pick up this fruit and then go back to the spear. That's the right half. For the left half, you want to do the same thing again. Take a spear and a piece of debris, jump down here, spear the wall, and eat the fruit. Head to the side here and slide down to this, eat the fruit, and jump here. Eat the last fruit and then do a boost jump to get back here and climb up. And then you're done. You'll need to kill one of each of the six lizards required for the Dragon Slayer passage in the base game. A blue, pink, green, orange, black, and white lizard. I recommend immediately going for the explosive spears and using those to reduce the number of lizards from 6 to 4. Ideally, don't target the white or blue lizards because they're the weakest and easiest to kill normally. Then target the white and blue lizard if they're still alive since one spear will cripple them and two will typically kill them. Then clean up the last two lizards. Your playing is artificial here, but there are four slug cats you're controlling, and you need to keep everyone alive while collecting every fruit. Walk directly right, then hold up and climb to grab this fruit. Then hold down and line up a pounce here, which will send these two artificers on top of the Skyflower food thing. Eat both of them, then hold down to go up here and eat this fruit. 
Now you're going to want to keep every other artificer exactly where they are currently by only walking to the right and occasionally jumping while you collect the next few fruits. Use minimal movements and pay attention to this slug cat here since the two on the right are going to be fine as long as you keep moving to the right. I recommend a double jump to reach this last fruit. Now you need to lead all four slug cats back to the dens. The two on the right are easy, but you need to lead these two back left. If you use the poles cleverly, you can move one to the left while the other one stays still because holding left will cause you to fall off of horizontal poles but not vertical ones. Once one of them gets to the left, you're in the clear to bring the other one back. This is a time limited challenge, a spear master where you need to spear each popcorn plant. Immediately generate a spear and throw it at this one as the water level rises, then generate more spears and climb down here. Throw two to the right and then quickly make a third and throw it left. Make a fourth and throw it here on the way up, then make two more. Throw one here, then head right in the bottom path and throw the second. Make two more and throw them at these two, then head up top in the top tunnel and make the last two. Throw one of them here and make your way down and spear this last one. Then just head to the shelter. Oh boy. This challenge is pretty hellish. You need to kill lizards in zero gravity with the rifle using debris as bullets that you pick up as you float around. The problem? There are a lot of lizards, the bullets do not do a lot of damage, and you get knocked around a lot by the recoil on the rifle and the caramel lizards. I did some testing in sandbox, and I don't know exactly how the gun's damage works, but it took me around 40 bullets to kill a cyan lizard. What I found to work well is start by going around and collecting as much ammo as you can, then retreat to this hole here and wait. Shoot the orange and cyan lizards as they come, and eventually they'll die or become too wounded to pursue you, at which point you can go hunt them down. It's slow, but it works. You only need 12 points, which is effectively two lizard kills, or a cyan lizard that you kill and eat. Once you aim the gun downward, you don't need to re-aim it, just fire whenever a lizard comes to fight you. This is a fun one. As Spearmaster, you need to knock all of the shells off of a red centipede. This red centipede is unkillable, but it will stun when its flesh is speared. Use that to your advantage. Use this tunnel to have it lose track of you and just produce and spam spears. If it grabs you, spear the flesh or pick up and throw the spears already stuck inside of it. The last few shells might be tough to hit, but you have unlimited spears in unlimited time. Keep running it in circles and picking up your spears, and just keep knocking off those shells. This is another gun challenge, this time being fueled with pearls. When you load a pearl into the gun, you get unlimited ammo and a shot that propels you backwards in the opposite direction that you fired it in. Aim down to the right and hold fire. The gun will continue to shoot in this direction as long as you hold down the shoot button. Jump when shooting for added speed and height, then keep going until you hit this gooey duck. Then aim down to the left and jump back, then aim down to the right and make the final jump. You do have a time limit, so you can't afford to mess around for too long. This is another four player slug cat challenge, but instead of platforming, you need to kill all three lizards as a monk. Thankfully, they're all relatively weak lizards. I honestly don't have great advice here, just pick up and throw spears at lizards and don't spear yourself. You can cripple the lizards before killing them while you deal with the rest of the lizards, and these lizard bites will often be non-lethal because they're weaker species of lizards giving you an opportunity to rescue the other slug cats if they're taken. Even if you spear yourself, it won't be fatal due to monks reduced spear damage, but that slug cat will be wounded and periodically collapse from here on out. And it's speed running time. Your rivulet, you've got your ball, and you need to make your way through a small maze to the exit. The time limit is meaningless, your objective is really just to get to the top faster than the acid rises. I recommend the path I take here. Pay attention to exactly where I go and when I activate the ball and follow my movements.
This is the last of the normal challenges, and it's a pretty cool one. As a monk, you need to make your way through a pretty rich ecosystem and earn a lot of points, which means you more or less just need to kill a bunch of things. This is by far the most complex arena challenge map. Scavengers, a brother long legs, all sorts of lizards, squid caters, centipedes, pole plants, and even a singularity bomb. You have 10 minutes, so time really isn't that much of an issue. You start with three options to leave this room. I recommend going straight to the right. Downward is a long water tunnel, which is going to connect to the room on the right, but it's a more difficult path to get there. If you go past where it connects to that room, you're going to reach a proto long legs infested room with exploding spears and a brother long legs. The room you need to go in is not that room though, and it's filled with scavengers and a salamander. Kill the scavengers, remember, two spears to kill them unless it's a headshot. You can get an exploding spear to kill the salamander as well, either from the scavengers or the brother long legs room, or just kill it normally. Once the scavs are dead, you should have quite a few points. Head up this left tunnel, pick up some fruit for some free points, and go directly up here. There will be several lizards in here, and the best way to deal with them is to bait them back into the room with all the dead scavengers and feed them or wait for them to eat the corpses, then attack them while they're distracted. It's only a pink and a blue lizard, so they won't be too tough to kill. At this point, depending on how many points you have, either follow past the lizard room or go back to the right at this corner. Going past the lizard room will take you here. There's a pole mimic and two centipedes you can kill for the last few points, then the tunnel will take you back to the starting room to rest in the shelter. Remember that Monk needs more than one spear to kill a pole plant, and you can eat centipedes for extra points. If you didn't have enough points yet, head to the room right up here. There are some bat flies and fruits to eat, and this room will lead back to the Brother Longlegs room. There's a scavenger treasury just up ahead, so don't bother going down there to get the exploding weaponry. Keep heading up here, and you can kill some squid caters for extra points and use them to distract the lizards in the area. The treasury is here, go ahead and stock up to face a pink, cream, and or cyan lizard depending on how many points you need. Following this path left will be a long room with the aforementioned lizards, at the end of which is a hole. Hug the left side as you fall, and you'll reach the singularity bomb, which can get you the last few points you need as long as you're cautious not to kill yourself. Then head down here like before and rest at the shelter. And now, the final challenge. This piece of f- <clears throat> Sliver of Straw. You play as Ascended Saint in zero gravity and need to ascend Sliver of Straw. However, unlike every other thing in the game, Sliver of Straw actually puts up a fight. She has six phases, and to beat each one, you'll need to survive until her shields go down and you can hit her with an ascension. This also means you'll need to end each phase with enough battery left to perform an attack so you can't spend it all on dodging. However, after each ascension you hit her with, your battery will recharge to fall, so don't worry about saving it between phases. Her first phase starts when you hit her with an ascension for the first time. She'll give off red sparks, which are harmless, and then start shooting explosive lasers at you. The lethal part of this attack is where it hits the wall and explodes. Being on the laser from the explosion will instead push you and stun you. Using your tongue of flight, fly in circles around her. The trick to making your flight battery last is to activate it for a brief moment, fly in a direction, and then leave flight mode. Since you're in zero gravity, you'll continue to fly in that direction. You'll know she's vulnerable to an attack when her distorted shield disappears and this power down sound effect plays. You'll only have a few seconds to ascend her. If you don't, she'll recover and the phase will restart from the beginning. You will not get your ascension back if you used any of it. Phase 2 will cause four glowing lines to appear on the background grid, and at the intersection of each of them, a large circle with the 10 karma symbol will appear and explode after a brief moment. It's similar to your ascension attack, but much larger and more telegraphed. As long as you're away from the circles, you'll be fine. I recommend hugging Sliver of Straw and making small movements boosted by ascensions to dodge whenever a circle would hit you. Phase 3 will cause her to start shooting lasers in a circular pattern around her. This is where you need to start using ascension to quickly move and change direction in zero gravity in the way that I described earlier. Activate flight, move in a direction, and then press jump to cancel it and continue flying. Follow the path of the lasers shortly after they fire and go in circles around her. She will do it four times, and then you're in the clear to attack her. Phase 4 combines Phase 1 and 2 as she shoots lasers while spawning the ascension circles. I recommend flying in short to medium distance circles around her by using your tongue and using ascension to quickly boost away if you're about to get hit by an ascension. This is a tricky phase and has some heavy RNG elements. Phase 5 is her most difficult phase by far, in my opinion. The chamber becomes flooded with lightning balls and there's a safe circle that's constantly moving in an infinity symbol throughout the room. However, the safe circle is gradually decreasing in size. You need to fly around and remain in this circle for quite a long period of time and both make very fast and very precise movements. Start in the middle of the screen, then go to the bottom right, top right, bottom left, top left, and then repeat the cycle as the circle decreases in size. At first, I would use your tongue to propel yourself and do not worry about moving too fast. Use your ascension if you don't have quite enough speed or if you need to stop yourself from hitting the lightning balls. Once the size of the circle decreases a bit, start using ascensions to control your movement, stopping and starting to make sure you don't hit the edge. Then, once the circle goes to its minimum size, it will move pretty slowly and you can tongue your way around it. 
The path is predetermined and there's not really any randomness to this phase, thankfully. Make sure you are at the top left of the circle once Sliver's shields go down. The lightning balls do not stop moving once she becomes vulnerable, unlike the previous phases. If you are not in a safe spot, they will kill you. Lastly, her sixth phase has the top and bottom of the screen covered in lightning balls while attacks come from the left and right. They'll shoot lasers once the smaller lines around the center one move in to touch it. This phase is pretty easily cheesed by hugging the middle of the wall on the side and using ascension to move out of the way near the end of the phase when the lightning balls start moving again. The balls will continue to move in this phase as well once her shields go down. After being hit, she'll need to be ascended one more time to kill her, at which point gravity will return and she'll collapse to the ground, dead. <laughs>